Welcome Coach Juwan Howard from the University of Michigan. Once again, raise your hand if you wish to ask a question and please state your name and affiliation each time you ask a question. Right here. Yeah, hey, hey Coach, Gentry Estes, Tennessee. And um, I noticed Jalen being at the game yesterday as you were leaving the court, y'all shared an embrace for, for a while. I'm just curious what you can tell us about what was said and just how much that meant to you in the moment. You really don't know me, right? <laughs> I'm, I'm, the guys that are from Ann Arbor, the media, they know I don't really share anything personal. Uh, I feel that I always keep that in house, but it was just great to see Jalen. Uh, he surprised me. I didn't know he was going to be here, but it's nothing like having family in the building supporting you. Michael said WZZM 13 Grand Rapids, you guys, it's been a while from a win streak. Obviously, you've had moments in games where you play good, you struggle. In your opinion, how close are you guys to putting all the pieces together and, and just really, you know, gearing up for something special here? Well, we understand we're going to be playing a really good team tomorrow. Uh, you know, this team is, you know, they have size and they have shooting, they have great coaching, experience coaching. You know, our, our, our key is just try to be, be ready from start to finish, uh, play competitive game, because that's the type of game we're expecting to play, uh, play Michigan basketball. Juwan, it, it, uh, Bob Wanowski, Detroit News over here. It uh, seems like Devontae Jones is uh, ready to come back. Is, is that true? And would you go straight into the starting lineup? Well, Devontae was uh, present today for our uh, morning practice and um, got out there and got a little lather and, you know, it's a game time decision. So uh, I will be, you know, on my knees praying tonight. Hopefully he'll be ready to go for tomorrow because we're going to need all hands on deck. We're going to go Zoom next for a question. Please unmute yourself and state your name and affiliation. Hey, Coach Howard. This is Chris Idell from Hermitton Radio in Baltimore. Uh, congratulations on the win yesterday. What does Tennessee look like in the uh, in the? Uh, and I know you guys played in the Big Ten. Do they look a little bit different than you've seen during the season, or what have you seen over your, your years of coaching? Can you repeat the last part of your question? I'm sorry. Uh, about Tennessee, what do they look like? Uh, you know, in your in your preparation, you know, throughout your whole career, you know, coaching at, at Michigan. Well, they're a very good team. Uh, you know, what I've seen is that I mentioned it earlier. They have great size, um, good inside play, uh, rim protectors. Uh, they also have shooting uh, that all over the floor from the perimeter, whether they're a primary ball handler uh, or from Chandler or uh, Ziegler, or they also have shooting from their wings. And uh, they're a complete team. Uh, great coach who's, uh, you know, as we all know, had a lot of great success in college basketball um, over his years and different programs. Um, you know, I, they play in a tough conference, which is the SEC. Uh, they face, you know, teams like Kentucky and many others. Uh, so, you know, I'm, I'm expecting this going to be a very competitive game tomorrow. Um, but yes, in the Big Ten, we've had a lot of, you know, competitive teams that we've faced that are pretty good too. That uh, it would be nothing new to us when it comes to, you know, facing size and facing shooting. Um, but at the end of the day, you know, we just got to you know, make sure when we get out there, uh, it, it, it's still basketball. <laughs> it's still basketball. The ball is still orange and it's still round. Back right there. Michael Cohen with the Detroit Free Press. Uh, Juwan, I think Villanova is the only team this year that played Tennessee and had fewer than 10 turnovers in a game. Uh, what is it that Tennessee does so well to consistently force opponents to make mistakes? Well, defensively, you know, they throw a lot of different coverages uh, at you. Sometimes they will put two to the ball and blitz. Uh, there are times when they have a, a soft blitz. Uh, there are moments when they put uh, bigs in a drop coverage. Uh, they also have switch, you know, one through five, depending on certain lineups that they have in there. I've also saw some zone uh, that they've played. So, you know, with those different type of uh, coverages, you know, at times it can, of course, either speed you up and will cause confusion out there on the floor. It somewhat get you out of some of the timing of your set, some of the scoring opportunities that you want to you know, uh, score whether it's inside or outside. But the key with us, we just can't overthink it. Um, just be patient, um, make simple plays, and not try to make the home run plays. Up front, right here. Grant Raymond, 247 Sports. Uh, 
Tennessee recruited Jet pretty hard. Uh, Jay said a few minutes ago that Jet, he thought Jet came pretty close to picking them. What's it like as a parent uh, going through that process in your position as a, as a coach with other big time programs coming after your school kids? Yeah, uh, my wife and it was more like the, uh, the lead on um, that recruiting process. And you know, she also was there to uh, help uh, during the, uh, the official visit. And you know, I remember I couldn't go because you know, we, we had an official visit lined up as well for and a very important one that came out to visit in Michigan. And I was a little disappointed because I wanted to, you know, to hear the recruiting process even though I had had some opportunities to speak with their staff and the assistant coach and head coach, but having your son, who you, now you got to go through a little recruiting war with one of the top programs in the SEC and you know, Michigan being Michigan, you know, I couldn't come there as arrogant and saying that hey, you know, this is family, family got to stick with family. You know, I still wanted my son to be able to you know, choose his school that he felt was best for his you know, his college future because I've already had mine and it's about him and I wanted him to enjoy the recruiting experience because he deserved it. Uh, he earned that right and you know, Tennessee being a great program and you know, I left impressed with them too, but my wife was too damn happy about Tennessee <laughs> and, uh, and Jet was ex excited about the program and what they had to offer for his development and uh, he was truly impressed with Coach. Um, so Barnes, I'm speaking of. So with that, um, it really came close. <laughs> he was leaning towards Tennessee. And now you look at it, it's like full circle. And here we are now in the NCAA tournament. Uh, we're facing each other in the uh, second round. Andrew Kahn, I'm live. Uh, kind of a similar question, but just so I don't write it wrong. Like, were you I guess, ever concerned that Jet would choose there? Or is that not the right word? Because you No, that is the right word. Okay. I was concerned. <laughs> I, I was. So I had to ramp up my recruiting. Um, and, you know, not saying we did not give him the same, ex well, not saying we did not give Jet the same recruiting experience that we would give other, you know, prospects. Uh, but um, now I can speak of Jet. You know, I won't get an NCAA violation. <laughs> but that's still my family. That's my son. That's my blood. <laughs> and with that, um, I kind of, slightly through that in my recruiting. <laughs> no, I'm just joking. But yeah, it, I, I did get concerned. I really did. I know you said you couldn't go on the official visit, but you know, if you could speak to the interaction you did have with Rick, Rick Barnes and kind of what relationship, if any, you, you built with him. Yeah, I, I left impressed, impressed with the man because I watched him from afar and I've seen his success and how he's turned around programs and things over at Texas and Know, how they play some you know, fun, exciting basketball, always stay competitive. I uh, watched them very closely because at times when Texas basketball, when Coach Barnes was there as the head coach, I was playing for the Houston Rockets. And you know, there were three years in a row where we had our training camp at uh, UT. So I was familiar with uh, Coach Barnes. And then to get a chance to talk to him and um, get to understand the man and uh, being a family man, also hear about a program and how he's helped develop, you know, a lot of these guys who've had success in the NBA now, like Kevin Durant and P.J. Tucker and Travis, um, T.J. Ford, excuse me. You know, he's, you know, he's had a lot of success in every program that he's been involved in. Hey, Coach, Trey Wallace with Outkick. You talked about Kennedy Chandler earlier. Oh, what have you seen from his tape, even – maybe going back to a recruiting process and looking at tape and then what he's been able to do this season as it's grown over the course of the last, you know, three months. Yes, Kennedy is a one, special, special player. Uh, one of the best point guards in college basketball, in my opinion. Um, the way how he's able to, uh, to make a immediate impact right out of high school into the college level, you know, that's pretty impressive. But it also says a lot about uh, the coaching staff and you know his development and putting them in the positions to to be, uh, to you know to help lead the team to where they are today. Um, looked at the you know his shooting. His shooting has gotten better. You know, it's Kennedy shooting like 40 plus percent from three. You know, he's always was known as a playmaker, a guy that can get downhill and you know athletic, and also a guy that can make plays for others. 
uh, but no one always never talked about a shooting, and you just see how he's worked on it, and you know that's one of his strengths. Um, he's also a high Q player, um, you know, has the same face. You know, I always call it the Kawhi Leonard and the, the Tim Duncan face, where you know he never can see a young man gets a little rattled or um, uh, frustrated, from what I've noticed. Um, and I've always been impressed with how you know he's always mentally stable. Um, when things are going good or bad. Take question off Zoom. Please unmute yourself and state your name and affiliation. Hey, Juwan. Uh, Cooper <coughs> Mister from TSN up in Canada. Uh, just wanted to talk to you about Caleb Houston. He seemed to have a couple key threes yesterday. Um, just wondered if you could talk a little bit about that and what you're hoping he can carry to uh, tomorrow for you as well. Yeah, Caleb, uh, you know, he's been great for us all season. And, you know, a freshman that – uh, step right in and, you know, earn his you know, starting position and um, loves to be coached and, you know, he's getting better and better. Um, you know, I see great things happen for him uh, with the game of basketball uh, while he's here at Michigan and also when he goes on and hopefully uh, play on the NBA level, which I think he has not a chance to. But uh, in the second half, you know, he made some really good plays and, and also some big shots that we needed uh, that keyed our run. Um, you know, sprinting in transition, which he's worked on all year, being able to stop, you know, on balance and shoot a three with a, uh, a hand that's flying at you, you know, that's not easy. Um, also, uh, coming off a, a, a dribble handoff and stopping on a dime, and then, you know, being able to um, get downhill you know, and being able to, you know, grow in that area, but wanting to grow in that area. You know, defensively, uh, he's been improving. He also has done a really good job of, uh, with his length of being able to get rebounds for us with his size and toughness. So um, we're going to need it. <laughs> we're going to need everything. We're going to need everyone. We're going to need Caleb on Friday. But I, I know he's looking forward to the, uh, you know, the, the big day. Uh, Mike Wilson, Knoxville News Sentinel. When you're looking at Santiago Vescovi on, on film, what makes him so difficult to guard before he even gets a shot off in terms of the way he moves and, and gets around the court? Well, you said it. He moves great without the basketball. Uh, his feet is always moving. Kind of reminds me of a guy like J.J. Redick. Um, also, you know, uh, Duncan Robinson. Um, you know, who, who other? Clay Thompson, Ray Allen. Reggie Miller, uh, you know, that's, that's pretty you know, special because the guy, you know, obviously he has to have you know, great conditioning. And you can see that he worked on it. Um, but it, then to be able to read where, you know, how the defense is playing or whether they're locking and trailing, how to curl it, or if a guy shoot the gap, how to step back and you know, sh um, shoot the jumper. Um, then and also you know, being able to uh, make a pass and then go back and follow it by, you know, setting up your defense by getting them off your body. I mean, th that's elite level, but it also says a lot about that he's a high IQ player that knows how to play basketball. And, you know, I've been impressed by watching him on film. He's, he's a tough guard. Thank you, Coach. Good luck tomorrow. Thank you. Appreciate it. A couple of announcements. As a reminder, the locker rooms are closed to all.